It's time now for perspective. On Tuesday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky urged the UN Security Council to hold Moscow accountable for its crimes in Ukraine. But what exactly would that look like and how likely are we to ever see Vladimir Putin or even members of his inner circle in the dock? My guest today is Reid Brody, human rights lawyer and former New York Assistant Attorney General. Thank you very much for joining us at France 24 today. You're quite welcome. Um, first of all, what exactly do we mean by the term war crimes and which war crimes specifically are we talking about in the context of Ukraine? So a war crime is a serious violation of the laws of war, the famous Geneva Conventions, uh, international humanitarian law. Basically, you cannot, in, a war, in wartime, you cannot attack civilians and civilian objects. So you can attack military installations, you can attack um, soldiers, but you can't attack civilians, you can't attack schools, you can't attack hospitals. You have to make a distinction. And you can't use weapons that don't make distinctions. So you can't, uh, you know, launch rockets into a populated area. You can't use, as are being used, cluster munitions, these, these little bombs that, 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 that drop hundreds of bomblets over a football field, kind of. Um, you cannot um, use carpet bombing. Um, so you have to make a distinction, essentially, between civilians and uh, military. That's, that's harder in Ukraine because uh, the Ukrainian people are defending themselves and, 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 and many civilians have been required to, to participate and then they become uh, military objects, uh, military. Um, uh, similarly, we've seen tanks and other artillery being placed next to apartment buildings and next to supermarkets and things like that. Um, so it becomes a little more complicated. But that's the basic rule. Um, you also have crimes against humanity, um, which are uh, 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 attacks, crimes committed on a massive scale, systematic or generalized, which is more, you can have, a, 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 a war crime can be committed by a single soldier. Crimes against humanity are more part of a generalized plan. And I think we're, we're also seeing that um, in, in the Ukraine. You also have crime of genocide, as alleged by, by, by many. I don't think that that is, uh, uh, couldn't be proven at the moment, in which you say that they are trying to eliminate the Ukrainian people or, or, or some uh, national uh, or, or ethnic group. Uh, and you also actually have the crime of aggression, um, which uh, is not very much used because there's no, at the moment, there's no tribunal that would be competent to, 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 to um, look at it in this situation. But in Nuremberg, most of the German commanders and leaders were actually convicted for the crime against peace, which was considered to be the supreme international crime, the crime of all crimes that leads to, to the others. So you have a number of crimes here. And you also actually have a number of investigations going on, like never before. Uh, you have the government of the Ukraine that has opened its own war crimes uh, and, and crimes against humanity investigation. You had the International Criminal Court, uh, which has sent investigators um, to investigate war crimes and crimes against humanity. You have 10 national courts, uh, Germany, uh, France, uh, uh, Lithuania, Spain, that have opened national investigations, either under the principle of universal jurisdiction or, or to defend their own citizens who are being killed. Um, I'm and, sorry to interject. Sorry. Are these courts working with each other, or is there, in some sense, a competition to get to the evidence first? No, I think that is a very important question, and, and, and certainly that there's always that risk. Um, uh, the European countries have a network called Eurojust and that is coordinating uh, the work. Um, and um, there are different portals that are being used um, to, to, for, for people to upload information. But in general, now there are meetings of coordination, yes. And who exactly would be the focus of any such case? Are we talking about the Russian government or are we talking about individuals, specifically Vladimir Putin? Joe Biden uh, very recently calling Vladimir Putin himself a war criminal. Could we ever see Putin himself in the dock? Potentially. I mean, I, you know, I, th I think we need to be lucid and sober here. We live in a world of impunity. 
Um, I mean, it, it suffices to look at what's going on uh, in the world in places like Yemen and Syria, not to mention, uh, you know, Xinjiang, North Korea, um, uh, uh, you know, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, um, uh, you know, cutting up a, a journalist. I mean, it, so we should be very, very sober about the possibilities here. But I think precisely because there is such interest, this is a moment, uh, and this is really the, 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 the moment of truth for international justice. And I think, yes, we're looking, on the one hand, the easiest targets are soldiers who you, you, you see on tape committing war crimes. Um, even then, you still have to identify them. You still have to determine uh, whether or not uh, there was a military objective. You have to know a lot more than you can usually see in a, in a, in a photograph. What's more difficult is when you, when you, when you move out and you, 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 um, you are looking for people who maybe were not in the theater of, of operations. I mean, what were the orders that were given? What was the chain of command? Um, all the way up to President Putin. President Putin presumably watches the same videos that we watch, or if he doesn't, he's decided not to. And, you know, it's, it's one thing to commit war crimes on a Monday and on a Tuesday and on a Wednesday, but if, if the people who, who are watching this and you're still committing it on a Thursday and a Friday and you're doing it in Mariupol and then you're doing it in Bucha, one can begin to presume that, uh, that there is some kind of, of policy. Also, you have what's called the, the, the principle of command responsibility. You need to know who's in charge. But if the people in charge are watching these crimes being committed and don't put an end to them, they can also be held responsible. So recently, there was a case in which um, we saw videos of Ukrainian soldiers shooting, apparently, Russian prisoners of war. The reaction of the Ukrainian government was, this is unacceptable. We remind our soldiers that they are required to follow the Geneva Conventions and the laws of war, and these crimes will be investigated and punished, and they are not subject to statute of limitations or amnesties. When we see Russian crimes like this, the reaction from Moscow isn't that. We've never heard them say, this is not acceptable. The only thing we've heard them say is, this is a fabrication, and we will prosecute people who make this claim. So, you know, there is, I would say that there is a, a lot of circumstantial and, and, and as well as tangible evidence that there is a policy of accepting uh, war crimes as, as, as natural. And frankly, we've seen the ru same Russian army and the same Russian commanders do the same thing in, in Grozny and in Chechnya and in Syria. And frankly, the fact that they were never punished and that no one was ever punished for that um, makes it, m has in some way facilitated the impunity with which it appears they believe they can do it now. Vladimir Zelensky is talking a lot about uh, genocide. He claims that a genocide is being perpetrated against the Ukrainian people. Um, we know that uh, a lot of people are accusing Russia right now of war crimes. But what concretely is the use of talking about possible future trials when the war is still very much going on now? Yeah, the war will not end because of all of what we're talking about. Um, and obviously, the first priority for everyone, and especially for the people of the Ukraine, is to stop the war. Um, as I said, if there had been war crimes prosecutions after the siege of Grozny and Chechnya, if there had been war crimes prosecutions after Aleppo, after Russians and Syrians bombed civilian hospitals in Aleppo, maybe this would not be happening the same way it's happening. So I think that um, holding people responsible um, has a, a major dissuasive effect. And, and it, you know, as, as, I mean, perhaps the only consolation for what is going on today uh, is this mobilization of outrage, this mobilization of support for international justice, for international norms, for respect. And, and the hope is that Tomorrow, the same thing will happen. I mean, that the same mobilization uh, would occur uh, for Yemen, <laughs> uh, for Syria, uh, for Palestine, uh, and for other situations. 
I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there, even though I'm sure we could discuss this uh, for many minutes to come. Reid Brody, human rights lawyer and former New York Assistant Attorney General, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us on France 24 today. You're quite welcome.